What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So on Friday, we did have an announcement from the Pokemon company that there would be a new Pokemon Presents this week where they will be talking about many of the titles heading to the Nintendo Switch over the next several months. And that does include Pokemon Legends Arceus, which people have several questions about this game still, and we're gonna go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about new sales data that's been released for the month of July when it comes to the Switch, the PS5, and the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. And we're also gonna be talking about some new pre-order information that's been released from GameStop that I think has Sean sweating a little bit. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with Twisted Metal. Now, the last game in the series that we had was back on the PlayStation 3, but my favorite one so far, I think is Twisted Metal Black from the PS2. However, it looks like there is a new rumor circulating about a new Twisted Metal game in development. We can see this over on Twitter. This is from Tom Henderson, who's been known to uh, put information out there. It's been correct, uh, leaks, if you will, in the past here. Certainly starting up many of rum many rumors online and getting people talking about it. But Tom Henderson posted 2023 with an image for Twisted Metal, and then goes on further to say, I tweet about games, which uh, the thing here is there is a TV series in production that they're going ahead with for Twisted Metal. And you know what, it makes sense. Like if you have the TV series, you'd probably wanna put a game next to it or at least around its release. So if people kind of just are browsing, let's say I don't know, wherever they're gonna put Netflix or wherever, and they see Twisted Metal, and maybe they like it, and then they take a look at the game. We've seen this with things like Witcher, where people saw the, the show or the series, and then they went out looking for the game and the game sales spiked. So obviously Sony notices that and it wouldn't shock me to hear that this is legitimate and it's gonna happen. The thing that's odd is David Jaffe, who's director of many previous Twisted Metal games, said on, on YouTube that he hasn't heard anything about this and I'm sure Sony could technically go ahead and develop it without them. It's just odd that David Jaffe heard about the TV series but nothing about the game. Either way, we'll keep an eye on this to see if anything else pops up because a new Twisted Metal would be great since that's probably what Destruction All-Star should have been in the first place. Also, all of last week, we were waiting for an update to that abandoned real-time experience application. Well, they actually updated it. I, I know, I was surprised too. I was making a video on the second channel going into the Blue Box Studios like history, and the update went live as I was editing it. So let's take a look at what happened here. This was over on Twitter where they say the patch is now live. Please check the update availability on your console. This patch introduced the following. Access to the app, a short introduction teaser for the app along with its announcements. Now, if you take a look at the application, is several boxes uh, that are just unpopulated and then one that appears to just have the teaser that they had posted previously on Twitter. You, this right here, you can see it. It's literally just a person walking along the floorboards and that's it. It was a five gigabyte update that people had to download. At this point, yeah, they're just trolling heavily now. And this game's supposed to come out in 2021. And I just don't think it's that's gonna happen. I wouldn't be shocked if they just try to string this along as much as they can, maybe in hopes that a publisher shows up and is actually interested in what they're developing. But I feel like if that does not happen, they'll just quietly go away. At least that's what I believe is going to happen. So we'll see here, but to be honest, I'm getting a little bored of the overall situation. So now they have to, I would say, reveal what this game really is because once Sony starts talking about things in a state of play, I feel like less and less people will pay attention to them. Oh, and we had talked a lot about the Steam Deck when it was initially revealed, but since then, I've kind of just been hanging out waiting until we get these systems into our hands and hopefully that happens in, I guess, within the year. There's a lot of demand for it and I'm sometime next year when I should be getting it. But it looks like Phil Spencer got his hands on a Steam Deck. You can see this over on Twitter where he says, was at Valve Software this week talking with Scott, Eric, Gabe about Steam Deck. After having mine most of the week, I can say it's a really nice device. Games with me on the go, screen size, controls, they're all great. Playing Halo and Age feels good. xCloud works well. Congrats, Steam Deck team. And we had heard talks that Phil Spencer and Gabe Newell were having conversations about something and a lot of us were speculating that maybe we could see Game Pass have some sort of native integration with Steam to where you go into Steam, oh, and there's a Game Pass application you can just access, stay in the Steam ecosystem, but you can access the Game Pass games there. And maybe he was having conversations with Gabe Newell about 
having Game Pass integrated into what the Steam Deck's gonna run out of the box, which is like their Steam OS, that would make a lot of sense there. Either way though, you can still sideload Windows and then access Game Pass and the Windows Store as you'd like. Again, that's the nice thing about Steam Deck, there's a lot of freedom there. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the Pokemon Presents that was announced on Friday, and we can see this tweet here. This is from Pokemon, saying, Attention trainers, tune in to our YouTube channel on Wednesday, August 18th, 2021, at 6 a.m. Pacific, that's noon Eastern, for a Pokemon Presents video presentation featuring Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, I was looking over this, I, I feel like at this point we know what we're getting with Diamond and Pearl, but I'm sure they could show off some other extra features or gameplay elements to it. From what I could tell, a lot of people were looking at this and saying, okay, we get another look at Pokemon Arceus, because if you remember when they initially showed it, I think the concept is clicking with everyone, because a lot of us have been asking, myself included, for Game Freak to change things up. We heard that Diamond and Pearl was actually pushed off uh, to a, like a different studio, essentially, in Game Freak, not like their quote-unquote A-team. They are working on Pokemon Legends Arceus. I like that a lot, because the idea of them moving over to something like an open world style Pokemon game could be massive for the franchise. It's just, they have to be able to do it correctly. And that's why I'm hoping that this Pokemon Presents focuses more so on Legends Arceus than it does on Diamond and Pearl. The only issue I see there is Diamond and Pearl are up next. They're coming out right in the middle of the holiday season in November, and it's Pokemon, let's be real, it's gonna sell well, but I'm sure they'd like to just hammer home the, the last big marketing push as we head into the holidays here with this Pokemon Presents. But something I've noticed after we had that initial trailer for Pokemon Legends Arceus, a lot of people were concerned about the way it looked and the way it performed, and I'm kind of looking at this thinking, okay, they probably showed some pretty early on footage, because if you remember, a lot of people noticed that in the uh, Switch OLED trailer, something about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl looked better there, and it, it could just be, oh, they dressed it up a bit more, maybe played around in editing and stuff when they were showing it off on the OLED, so that you did have that sense of, wow, this OLED screen looks really nice, and I guess, I guess Diamond and Pearl look better too, but if they show off Diamond and Pearl again and the visuals do just look better there, all right, great, that's good to hear. But Legends Arceus is the one that I think people are hoping has a visual upgrade, quote unquote, with another showing because it did look rough at times. Animations were not great. Uh, the frame rate looked to be chugging at times and visually, I mean, we gotta at least go up to a GameCube tree, right? And while they mostly named Diamond, Pearl, and then Arceus, I'm also wondering if they could do maybe some other announcement here, something smaller, because we haven't heard about Pokemon Sleep, like, at all. And that at least was like, okay, how are they gonna do this? How's this gonna work? What is this? And then they've kind of been silent since then. So maybe it had to go back in the oven for a bit in development. They had to figure out more about what Pokemon Sleep was going to be. And then of course they could talk about Pokemon Unite here. I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that a large chunk of this time is, de is dedicated to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Cause I think Diamond and Pearl, they're locked in. I think they're gonna sell well. It's Pokemon Legends Arceus at the beginning of the year. That's right at the end of January, where I'm a bit more concerned, but an open world Pokemon game, as long as they show up here to this presents, and it looks decent, I think it's also gonna do very well. So we'll see what happens this Wednesday. Next up, let's talk about sales data that was released by the MPD Group for the month of July. Now, on Saturday, I went over what was dubbed the Switch Effect when it came to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD and uh, just its overall performance here on the charts, but I wanted to look a little bit more into the charts here today. So let's first head over to this chart that does show the overall spend when you kind of take a look across several months dating back to last July, where July 2021 spending gained 10% versus a year ago to $4.6 billion. And I have a feeling that has to do with more and more PS5 systems finding their way onto, I guess, online retailers, not really into store shelves, but it would still count here uh, in the MPD group for like Walmart's, Best Buy's, and all of this. The Switch did sell the most units overall, but the PlayStation 5 brought in the most revenue, and that's gonna happen with the Switch pricing at 200 and 300, and the PS5's pricing at 400 and 500. If we take a look at the sales charts here, we can see the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD was the best-selling game of 2021, and it's very important to note that these are just 
physical copies for Nintendo's first party titles that are counted. They don't, they're not able to count the digital sales mostly because Nintendo does not share them with the MPD group. Now from there, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War at number two. I, I tell you guys all the time, Call of Duty just always ranks in like the top three when it comes to the MPD group in the US. That's just the way it is. We like our Call of Duty games here. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin had actually a really good debut. In fact, according to the MPD group, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin, uh, it actually debuted here with the launch month sales, actually tripling the lifetime sales of Monster Hunter Stories that released on the 3DS in 2017, which, I mean, a lot of our attention was turned to the Switch at the time, so it does make sense, but good to see that Monster Hunter in general, the franchise, continues to just move. Whenever they release, they do well with sales. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, yeah, sure, why not? It's up there in the charts. Minecraft at, at uh, number five. Mario Golf Super Rush at number six. MLB The Show 21. The little, the little arrow there means that they weren't able to count Xbox sales. I guess that's just because like Sony shares. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but those would just be uh, from Sony's side there on the PlayStation. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, in at eight. Then we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 at nine. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate rounds out the top 10. Overall, a pretty good month for games. Being able to beat July 2020 and showing that The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD was in demand. I think a lot of it has to do with people who have the Switch now just didn't really play the game on the Wii or maybe they didn't even have a Wii at the time. Like I said, we're to the point now where gamers have been cycling through. I mean, the Wii came out in 2006 and I know Skyward Sword came out, what, 10 years ago? It was like 2011. But still, there are a lot of people who are now coming into the hobby and the Switch might be their first platform. You know, like younger gamers, absolutely. So they see The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword after playing Breath of the Wild, and it didn't really matter to them if it was a $60 port from the Wii. A lot of enhancements, of course, being made to it with button controls, 1080p, 60 frames per second, all of that, but it was new to them, so it was worth uh, the price, and it pushed it up to the top of the sales starts there with just physical copies. But like I said, overall, pretty good month of July for gaming. Next up, let's talk about an email that GameStop sent out when it comes to pre-order information, specifically different rankings for how many pre-orders they have for different Switch titles since June 8th, and I guess that runs until like mid to early August here, but let's take a look at the charts because it looks like the game at the top is Metroid Dread. That's right, I, I was almost positive. It would have been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, just in general, in like a double pack, sure. But no, the number one game is Metroid Dread. Huh, okay, so then we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, that's the double pack, you just get both of them together for essentially the combined price. Mario Party Superstar, okay, so Metroid Dread has more pre-orders right now at GameStop than Mario Party and Pokemon, hmm. Pokemon Legends Arceus is number four. Shin Megami Tensei five is number five. Then we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, WarioWare Get It Together, Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, Sonic Colors Ultimate, and Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. Now, we've had a lot of conversations on the Spawncast and on Twitter around Metroid's first year sales performance, and I've pretty much stuck to the idea that Metroid Dread is just going to run right through that three million unit mark in the first year. I'm starting to lean more towards the first six to seven months now. I mean, this is just more information and proof to throw on the pile when it comes to things like the Switch effect and a lot of excitement around Metroid Dread. So much so that it's the most pre-ordered game at GameStop, even over Pokemon. I mean, we're talking about the new Pokemon game this holiday, right? You'd figure that would be at the top of the charts for the Switch. No, it's Metroid Dread. Now, the big thing about Pokemon is there are three different SKUs that people are pre-ordering. I'm sure if you combine them all, yeah, it would be number one on the chart here because you have the double pack, you got Diamond, you got Pearl, and people are just going to pick and choose which one they want. But still, it's impressive because we're talking about Metroid Dread next to Pokemon. Pokemon generally sells 15 to 20 million copies without too much issue. I'm not even asking for half of that with Metroid Dread. But it was pretty funny because I had just been talking to Sean about the idea of Metroid Dread crushing that 3 million unit mark and him having to play through Balan Wonderworld and crushing cans on his head and then this info drops. So exciting stuff there for the Metroid franchise. I think this is gonna be the big jumping off point for Metroid in general, and it's gonna launch us towards Metroid Prime 4 when that's ready to release in, I don't know, 2026. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about that lawsuit that had wrapped up between Nintendo and ROM Universe, where Nintendo had them shut down their website and then they made them pay Nintendo 
million dollars in like $50 incremental payments. Basically, you're gonna be paying Nintendo $50 a month for like the rest of your life. But it looks like things aren't going to plan as they had missed their first payment. And it appears that Nintendo was concerned that ROM Universe could actually make a return. So they, they were seeking an injunction and it looks like they got it. If we go over to Torrent Freak where they had the report, they say a California federal court has ordered the operator of the now defunct pirate site ROM Universe to destroy all copyright infringing games within two weeks. The court initially denied the request for a permanent injunction, but changed its position after Nintendo warned about a potential comeback of the site. The $2.1 million summary judgment still stands. In fact, if we take a look at the actual language used in the lawsuit here from Judge Marshall, it says defendants shall permanently destroy all unauthorized Nintendo games or other unauthorized copies of Nintendo's intellectual property, including movies, books, and music, no later than August 17th. 2021 so i mean the image in your head right now is probably this person like sitting at the back of their house in the backyard or something just smashing all of their super nintendo cartridges from nintendo they're saying unauthorized use so like i guess just bootleg cartridges maybe ones that they had burned to a chip and like they were playing on their super nintendo or something like that or just or just roms where they have to delete them off their system it is funny though to think that they might have to like throw a hard drive out or destroy the hard drive or something there's just like i said nintendo isn't necessarily in it for the money they're more or less making examples out of these kind of lawsuits and these situations. Now, there had been talks from the person who was running ROM Universe that they might just bring it back, and Nintendo didn't want to see that because if they went all the way through this lawsuit with Nintendo and then ROM Universe still came back, I mean, that doesn't make, that makes Nintendo uh, look kind of weak in the situation. They weren't having that because they're not going to be able to go after every single ROM website out there. There's just too many of them. They more or less want to just put the fear into them that Nintendo could one day show up on your doorstep with uh, their own lawsuit that you have to deal with. And then you have to pay Nintendo $2.1 million potentially over the course of the rest of your life. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, ahead of Pokemon Presents this week, how are you feeling about Pokemon Arceus from what we've seen so far? 18% said I'm already sold on it. And then 23% said I'm not interested in the game at all from what they've shown. But look at this, 59% of people are right in the middle saying I'm interested, but I need to see more. And that's kind of where I am right now. I, I feel like the idea of an open world Pokemon game is awesome. It's what we've been asking for for a long time now, for Game Freak to kind of change up the formula, and it appears that they're ready to do that, but it, I, it's got to look better than what they've shown so far in that first trailer, and from what I was hearing, that was older alpha footage, and at least they had something to show, and it wasn't just like the, the Metroid Prime 4 JPEG or something, right? So, at least they did that much, but... I'm hoping they show up here with this Pokemon Presents. Pokemon Arceus has all kinds of cool stuff to show, and then we're off and running to Diamond and Pearl this holiday, and then a big release for Pokemon Legends Arceus, that big open world Pokemon game a lot of us have been requesting at the end of January. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Glitter saying, if Rockstars bring back old games, I'd love to see Midnight Club on Switch in some form. And so would I, because I think Midnight Club LA was a really fun racing game. It came back on the Microsoft Store recently, so you can buy it on your Xbox, fully backwards compatible. It's funny because, of course, you see all these older cars from like 2008 and 2009 and this, but the gameplay and kind of the open world at the time where you basically figure out your own way to get to uh, the end of the race was really fun. So I would like to see them try Midnight Club again. I just don't think they're going to take the older Midnight Club like LA and port it to the Switch because you do have to deal with licensing around these cars and a lot of times music because they try to put like real licensed music into the game, I guess, because you're listening to your radio and they want, want it to be realistic. Even Maybe even Nokia because you had like a, you had like a sidekick too. Yes, yeah, it's that long ago. So I would like to see them make a brand new Midnight Club though, because it is a shame that Midnight Club LA is the last one we had. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Well, there's the Pokemon Presents coming up here in a few days on Wednesday. What are your expectations around this event, specifically for Pokemon Legends Arceus? And then what about Metroid Dread topping the pre-order charts for GameStop since E3 with all these Switch titles, even like Pokemon being below it. You think it's time for RGT to start sweating a bit here when it comes to the 3 million sold in the first year. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.